Hello, this is Anne de Guise from the Anne Insights channel on YouTube. This is February, January the 22nd, 2021. Yes, it's a new year. And guess what? We have good news uh, this week. So uh, in the first video, you're going to see that it looks like the U.S. is speaking, at least on a number of cases. Unfortunately, we have that three to four weeks delay in mortality. That's still extremely bad. In the second video, we're going to talk about a couple of new therapies that have emerged. We'll talk about the mutation that we need to really keep an eye on uh, from the UK and South Africa. But more importantly, we're going to talk about how you can optimize your vaccination response. How do you boost your immune system before you get the vaccine and what you need to do before and afterwards to get the best number of antibodies. So you don't want to miss this. Please spread the word and, and thank you for, uh, for being part of the Uninside family. Please subscribe if this is the first time you see it. Hello, this is the first video uh, on the epidemiology, and we have some good news. Uh, at least there's some light uh, that may be coming at the end of this really long, dark tunnel. Uh, it looks like we may be peaking, you know, we'll have to see that, but you can see North America is peaking nicely. So is Europe, some part of Europe. South America is having a bit of an upsurge, so we need to keep an eye on that. Uh, unfortunately, worldwide, uh, we're going to see, we're going to hit pretty much 100 million uh, uh, people uh, pretty soon. We're already at 96 million with 2 million deaths. And I'll, I'll spend some time on the US. We've had uh, 24 uh, million cases. And the good news, we have now dropped from 300,000 cases two weeks ago to less than 200,000 cases. So that's a significant drop. Uh, as a result, we have a, a, a little bit of a drop in hospitalization, but we still have that three to four weeks delay. So unfortunately, we had another a deadliest day uh, in the US with over 4,400 people who died a couple of days ago. Uh, and we talk about vaccination. Uh, there's been 16 million people vaccinated in the US um, since I talked to you. Uh, in the second video, you don't want to miss it and you want to spread that one. We're going to talk about a couple of new therapies that have come out. We're going to talk about new mutation, which is we need to keep an eye on so we don't have an upsurge again, like in Europe. And more importantly, we're going to talk about what you need to do, all the little tips you have to do to optimize your immune system to, to get the best antibody response to the vaccines that hopefully you're going to get uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks or months. So let's get the show rolling. Um, let's look at the country that have been successful in controlling the disease. And to give you an idea worldwide, we now have a rate of 1.25% of the population has been hit. COVID. We have uh, 12,000 cases per million. The US, to give you an idea, 74,000 cases per million. So let's look at the successful countries in the world who have been able to manage COVID. To give you an idea, worldwide, we have 12,000 cases per million. Around 1.25% of the population has been exposed to COVID and has been infected. The US is 74,000. I mean, that's significantly... Uh, more than the rest of the world. New Zealand, to give you an idea, is 472, and Taiwan is 36. So look at these ratios. I mean, that is stunning. What have they done differently? What they all did, and especially you can see in the map of the world that South Asia has really done a much better job as, as well as part of Africa in controlling the disease. A very quick in intervention by the federal government, uh, putting distancing restriction, lockdown, uh, immediate massive testing of the population, uh, doing contact tracing of 10 to 1 ratio and uh, and putting people in quarantine and isolation. And we didn't do this in the US. And I think that's where you see some of the big difference. Worldwide, since I saw you two weeks ago, we've, we've added 10 million cases. So we've, we're pretty much close to 100 million cases, probably by the end of the weekend, and over 2 million deaths. And of course, the US, you can see, is driving that as well as Europe. We have uh, the US at 24 million cases. India is now number two at over 10 million cases, but a lower mortality rate. And Brazil, which you know had this big surge there, is at 8.7 million cases there. Here's the good news. The number of cases worldwide, this is the first time I've seen this in months, has gone down by 5%. Unfortunately, because we, have that, we had that huge surge, we now have three to four weeks delays and you see, of course, the increase in mortality, which is quite significant. We've had 16,000 daily deaths worldwide. A quarter of that is the US. And so, so unfortunately, we're leading that mortality rate. Now, worldwide, there is a mutation which we really need to keep an eye on. And you can see how in the UK, which is that pink curve there, when they, they did some massive lockdown to control it, and it just had a big hit on Ireland. 
uh, and again, a big drop there. 60% uh, of the new cases in Ireland were due to that mutation in, in the UK. So uh, the US uh, you know, is unfortunately in that same pack there as far as the, the daily case rate. So you, the good news, we'll, we'll spend more time on that. The US seems to be peaking out. Uh, we have to wait a few more weeks to make sure that we're going downwards. Brazil has a bit of an upsurge, uh, so we need to keep an eye on that. And now if you compare the US to Europe, look at the difference there. So Europe basically put the lockdown, if you remember the end of last year, and I've kind of stabilized it, but I'm going to show you it's a different story country for the country. The US has had a major drop in, in the last several weeks. And that's great news since people are really doing a much better job at doing social distancing and wearing masks and just being careful there. So that is working, please keep it up. And, and we don't need to keep it up for a few weeks. We have to keep it until it drops all the way back to a normal level there. So Europe is like a whack-a-mole. It's the only way I can explain this. I mean, first remember we had Belgium had this huge peak and you know, basically cranked down on the whole country there. And then we had the UK, which was in brown here and again, cranked down. And we had a similar problem that was in the Netherlands. And now guess what? It's Portugal and Spain. So, so the issue with this virus is that you really have to bring it under control because if you just bring it down a little bit and don't control it, you know, it can explode in a matter of a couple of weeks. Now, part of that, it could be that new mutation from the UK that's starting to spread across Europe. The other thing that we need to talk about, and I really highly advise uh, that you change some of the things you're doing there, the U Europe is ditching the cloth mask. It is very clear that the infection they're having in Europe is because people are not using medical grade mask. Now that we are able to increase manufacturing capability there, in Germany and Austria, it is now mandatory to wear a medical style mask, i.e. a N95 or a K95. And I've been able to get on, on, on Amazon and other places there, good N95 and K95, they're becoming available in the US. In France, they're planning to discourage the use of cloths and homemade masks. They're not protective enough. Uh, to give you an idea, there was a study in the Lancet that I think I've mentioned in the past that shows that uh, basically this N95 and surgical mask have close to, N95 is like 90% protection. Surgical mask is between 80 to 90%. But single layer mask, some of these cotton masks and home masks, they may be 50% effective. They don't protect you enough. And another study from Duke University was saying the same thing there. So it's really important that uh, you start looking at the mask you're using and update them and also looking at the fitting. Uh, in addition to, to upgrading the mask that people are using in the population there. So this is the N95, kind of the blue one there. This is a surgical mask. These are the ones that I think you can trust. A lot of the cotton and, and, and tissue mask are not protective enough, especially if we have that UK mutation that's going to come into the US. Uh, as a result, Europe is extending the lockdown. Uh, uh, Germany and Netherlands for the first time as a curfew since World War II. They were kind of in denial like Sweden for a while. UK now has increased the fine up to $8,000 if you're breaking the rules. And you're seeing this in, in a lot of European countries there where there's no consequences if, you, if you're being caught uh, breaking it just because they're having such a hard time controlling the virus spread. Israel, this is another good news, it has shown that they were, ex if you remember, we discussed two weeks ago that they did a fantastic job at vaccinating their population in a very short period of time. What they have shown is that after 14 days after they started giving the shots, they had a 33% reduction in the spread. And what that means is that it's the first evidence that if you get vaccinated, there's a lower transmission rate of the virus, there was always this big concern that you get vaccinated, you don't get sick, but you still could be contagious and giving it to other people there. And this is the first publication there or data point that seems to have shown that it does decrease the contagious rate, doesn't get rid of it, but decrease it. So it's not full protection, so you still should wear a mask, but at least, you know, as a, as a loved one, you, you, it provides a tiny bit of confidence that, you know, you have a lower risk. Uh, the Israeli have the best country in the world as far as giving their vaccine. Uh, already two million Israeli have already got their first shot. So very effective uh, program there in the rollout. Let's look at the weekly case per million. Look at Portugal, totally exploded to the highest rate in the world right now uh, per million on a daily on a weekly basis. Spain, you know, had also that explosion there. US is pretty stable, around 500 cases per million. So let's look at the US. Um, 
some good news. Uh, two weeks ago, we're talking around 300,000 cases per week. Uh, sorry, 300,000 cases per, um, and now we have dropped to less than 200,000 cases. That's great news. That's a major drop. And you can see on a two week basis there, you know, has dropped over 21%. Unfortunately, mortality is still going up because there's that three to four weeks delay there. And this is the other good news. Hospitalization has gone down. It, it went as high as 135,000. So, uh, so we may be picking out. No, that's assuming we don't get that mutation. And we'll talk more about it in the second video. Uh, so unfortunately, mortality, we're still hitting some of the highest rate. Uh, I've shown you this graphic there. I had to update it. So in, 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 in far engine red is the one uh, in the last week. And you can see uh, after the Galveston hurricane, uh, we basically, the, this week, we had two of the highest daily number ever in the US history. Uh, and so, so nine out of the 10 deadliest in, in US history now are related to COVID and they were in the last few weeks. So uh, hang in there. Uh, I think it has to get better. Uh, but this was the P that, that everybody was talking about. So as far as the daily cases, it's still California, Texas, New York, and Florida that are leading their charge. You can see the number of new cases there uh, are pretty high uh, and they have high cases for rate per million there if you look on a normalized basis there. So uh, not too much of a slowdown there. Uh, let's look on the regional basis there. The Northeast is tapering up. Midwest is going down, except Arizona and some of the states. South, unfortunately, is still going straight up, and so is the West. But the West, we're going to see California has some improvement there. It's plateauing. So the South is the one that you know need, needs to get under some control. If you look at the new cases per million uh, uh, on a daily basis there for today, you can really see Arizona and, 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 um, uh, and um, Arkansas are the worst. Um, and you know, uh, we know we have a lot of cases in California, but that's just because the population is very large. But the darker colors, which is this whole southern area I was telling you about, uh, they still have a pretty high new case rate. Uh, so we, we don't have the whole country under control. We have some pockets. And another way to look at this is that this is the graphic two weeks ago. It was a lot of dark red. It has improved a little bit. Uh, but we still have uh, some of the states I just mentioned, Arizona and California, you know, still in the deep red. Good news again here. Uh, if you remember, this is a graphic that basically keeps the records of the, high, the highest daily case per state. And for a while, we were kind of breaking this record like every two weeks. And now for the good news, uh, except for New York and Virginia there, that basically broke some records there. You know, it seems to be, as I said, the rest of the country is slowing down and is stopping to break new daily records. Uh, as a result, you can see the hospitalization rate has been going down, which is fantastic news because we had discussed two weeks ago that, you know, we were pretty much at capacity. A lot of the states had no ICU beds left. And, and you can see that some places have really dropped down, like Oregon and Kansas, you know, have had major drops. Uh, so we have 20 states are going down in hospitalization and Vermont is going up a little bit there, but that could be the, uh, the, size, the size of the population there. So uh, this is a graphic that you, I'm, I'm going to show again, and I'm going to put a link on YouTube. This is a way for you to look localized at your hospitalization two weeks ago. If you remember, we were pretty much at full capacity in the San Francisco Bay Area at close to 99%. And you can see there is capacity uh, in a lot of the hospitals. So that's great news uh, because it's not only about COVID, but if we have a heart attack or stroke or trauma, you wanna make sure there's capacity. So this is the best I've seen uh, in several weeks. So hospitals are opening up. Uh, vaccination may be one of the reason. We have distributed close to 40, 40 million doses. Around 19 billion doses have been administered, which is the equivalent of 16 million people because some people have got two doses. And you can see the majority are Pfizer, but they're pretty close to each other uh, in, in, in the spread between uh, Pfizer and Moderna. There. And the good news is over 2 million people, 2 million doses have been given in long-term care, which is where we have the, the highest mortality. So slowly but surely, uh, I think that may uh, slow down the virus as we increase in vaccination. And you can see the vaccine dashboard. Some states are doing better than others. The darker color is over 6% of the population has at least got one shot. So you can see New Mexico and Oklahoma have done a good job there. And of course, California, as you know, has had a problem in their rollout, uh, as well as Arizona and Nevada there. So we all, every state um, uh, was left on their own and there was a lot of rollout problem there. And hopefully with the new administration, we're going to improve this drastically with mass center for vaccination, which people are rolling out. 
California is peaking. That is a very nice graph. Um, and you can see pretty much, you know, uh, is the direction we're going to go. We still have that delay, so mortality is still going up. Uh, this is another good news. If we were as high as 13% in positivity rate in California, it has not dropped at 10%. We want, to be we want to be below five, so we have a long way to go. So we don't want to celebrate. It's a good news. Whatever you're doing, keep it up. Um, and you can see we have some improvement. So our daily rate was at 39,000 cases. We've dropped to 33. It's a little bit of a drop, but at least it's in the right direction. Positivity rate has dropped from 14 to close to 10%. Hospitalization rate has gone down on, on a daily basis. And the death rate, unfortunately, is going up because of that delay. Uh, this is to give you an idea. So in California, it's still under huge pressure there as far as availability and all of that. So, uh, so it's still a big issue down there. So I want to encourage you to get vaccinated. 2021 is the year to get vaccinated. And uh, I'm going to get vaccinated next week. So I'll give you more information in the next video. Uh, so please watch uh, our second video. Uh, we're going to be discussing what's the best thing you can do to boost your immune system before you get your vaccine to maximize the antibody production. And we're going to give some update on this uh, mutation there that is we need to keep an eye on so we don't have upsurge.